additions to the agenda? Uh, I have one small one. Uh, the February 20th meeting is on, is that President's Day? Yeah. Okay. So we'll have a little discussion about how we want to handle that. Well, That's the February, the second meeting in February? Yes. That's our next meeting. It's also the same night of the past of Lamar Union High School. In okay. We you know if they're moving their meeting? No. No. Okay. Good. That's a voted date. Um, well, let's not do it right now. Just adding it to the agenda. Okay, got it. We should do it while Mark is here. It's um, a proclamation on added. Yes, that needs to be added. Maybe we'll do that right up at new items. So number four. And Brian, are you going to give us a brief update on the monthly proposal as part of your report? Sure, I can do that. I did have a chance to speak with Tyler since then. So I've got a little bit of a update beyond what you got in email. Yeah, we'll do that as confirmed new number nine. Or we can do it during select board issues and concerns. Okay, there. Um, okay. Oh, wait, invoices. Uh, Apex Software, uh, $235. Rosso Fuels for Hocum House, $493.92. Uh, Mill House, $452.61. From the town and then one from the village. It hopefully should be, but um, Brian, we're on vacation. He asked me to call the Brussels and get canceled, and I forgot to do that. Um, capital steel and supply, GF. What is sheet? What is sheet? Parts and supplies. It's something the highway had for. We had to cut some metal for them. Yeah, I, I think that's you know plate that steel. Is? I don't know the specifics of it, but it, I believe that that's plate steel that they would, would cut and shape for projects. Okay, certified laboratories, supplies, $639.95. And what is that? Is it water samples? That it's one I'm highway. not sure. It's a highway thing. Can I do the other ones while you're looking at it? Well, you probably have it working out. Capital steel is for a bunch of different pieces, steel tubing and flats, etc. Um, I don't see the invoice. Certified. Oh, certified. Um, Prima Lube fiber, Prima Lube red aerosol, and fuel charge. Okay, well, I don't know what those are. Okay. Jack Horse, um, Holcomb Heating, 148.09, Fisher Auto Parts, Tapping Screw Kit. Wires, trailer connector, filters, filter, license plate light, and washer fluid for a total of three hundred and eighty-five dollars and ninety-five cents. NP phone installation of a wire nine hundred ninety dollars. That's good. Um, Ross deposit. Okay. okay. Uh, Ross. Fifty percent. Uh, no, no, it's back there. Yeah. It's thirty two hundred. Yeah, because it rolled up. Yeah. Ross Environmental Landfill. Um, $2,928.35. Staples, um, $59.55, half due from the village. 
Stitchell, Page and Fletcher, Legal Services, $1,207.50. Store Reporter, Job Ad, $335.70. United Construction, um, Throttle Pedals and Screws, and Shock for Tilt Steering, $705.75. Jenna Promise Memorial Fund, Red Hooper Presentation, $160. Profile Inc. Um, preservation Acquisition, $6,055. Napa Auto Parts, $720.51. Viking, I assume it's Sives or whatever concept. Freight for Winter Parts, $1,490. Rotley Training Courses, $28. Um, Wood signs for the playground, $975. Jasmine Uris for Canadian Oven, 7464. Um, review and approved minutes from January 6th and 23rd. I'll move to approve. Motion to a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Select board issue some concerns. Just barely. Just barely. That was a close one. <laughs> Select board issues and concerns. Uh, Mumley update. So uh, I was able to speak briefly with uh, Tyler Mumley. The they don't believe that there's going to be they're they're excited about the the proposal they don't have any problems with the changes uh and clarifications that we we requested and they think they'll be able to deliver uh a contract that we could sign by the 20th would he be available by phone if we had any questions or anything uh, on that night, I didn't ask, but I I can. You think we you think we should ask if he's could be available? Other board members, just in case. Yeah, see so why. Uh, yeah, keep it moving. It's only possible. Only one thing. Oh, you no, just they're doing oh, well. they're, don't worry. Hang, they're still <laughs> hang right on. Um, so if you could ask Brian, that would be great. Yep. And we don't know when yet because it'll be whenever we reschedule. Yeah. 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 Any other issues or concerns? None. Would that Teresa if you want Mark to sign when he gets here? Yeah. We got three signatures. Yeah, close enough. Uh, okay, you're good. No other issues or concerns, Duncan? Uh, no. Okay. Treasurer's report. Okay, I've got a liquor license, a catering liquor license for such a special event. It's Black Flannel Brewing. And they're going to be doing a, a tasting at the flannel store in the um, on, on February 10th. In the hours of noon to 7 p.m. That's the Black Flannel Brewing from Essex? Yes. About flannel. Yep. That's great. It's, Are they the same people? Yeah. Oh. No, I don't think so. This is in celebration of National Flannel Day. It's just a <laughs> it's just a class to them. Motion to approve. Second. Like your license for date specified. Any discussion? All those in favor? Me. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay, I've got a couple renewals in my portal, but they have not paid the town fee. Do you does the board want to approve them? Contingent, contingent upon how, or are you, or do you want to wait till we get payment? Is how, this for tobacco or alcohol? Both. How are we handling? Sorry. 
how are we handling that extra letter that we send with them? Are we are you entering it in the portal and does that attach or do we send that? We'll send that to separate. Because so I would only entertain a motion to approve upon payment if that was part of it. Do you know who the renewals are for? Oh, Jollies, Mayfields, and the Sterling Market so far. Um, and all of them have well, they, they submitted their application at the end of last week. Okay. I haven't seen anything yet. And what are they? They're um, April 3rd, yes. But we got, there's plenty of time. No, just wait just for the full. Who cares? Okay. Okay. Motion to approve liquor license renewals pending uh, town approval uh, with the addition of the common town letter being sent to each of the renewals. For Jolly Sterling Market and Mayfields. Fields. Yes, those three. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Did your motion include, or of course, your did it include? Payment of the fees, receiving the fees. Ah, uh, it, it included the receiving the town fee, but I guess all fees. Once we get payment. Once we get payment. payment I can go in, in there and. Yes. Approve. Okay, for those three. You good for that? Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Donna, you got that? I, I, I think that you're okay. approving the uh, liquor license for Jolly Field and Sterling Market. Um, once all fees have been received with that normal letter to be sent. Perfect. And I've got um, loan, loan rates from the Union Bank and another one from Community National Bank. Union Bank was 4.49 for five years. This is for the greater. And Community National is 5.25%. But you don't actually have a, a, a no. You guys wanted to like, okay, can we do that? Yeah. We'll have 30 days after receipt of the invoice, and we haven't yet received an invoice. We haven't received delivery, we haven't received an invoice, and it'll be net 30 after the invoice. So we should be okay. Mm -hmm. So I would certainly suggest that Union Bank is the one we should go for as the but suggest the, the lower interest rate. Fully agree. So can you have those yep. ready for us? Do you want me to sign this acceptance or do you want Beth to sign the acceptance? Let's get a motion. Uh, uh, to authorize <laughs> Beth to sign the acceptance letter for Union Bank. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. I have it signing. Yeah. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. The other thing I have is that proclamation that Eric has done up. Do we'll do that later. We have to let us talk about it properly then. That's all that I had. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Any planned purchases? No planned purchases for. Uh, for the next period. Perfect. Let's keep that up. Yep. <laughs> Good. Standing commission appointment. <laughs> so first up, we have Adrian Stevenson uh, is being recommended for appointment to the planning commission, fill a vacant seat through March of 2024. And the planning commission recommended this. Correct. Um, and we'll... No one other interested parties? Secure. No one else has come forward. Um, was that advertised uh, according to yep. Carol's Lanter's request? For... Yeah, we re-advertised it a, a second time in the News and Citizen, you know, to just make it a little more current to this appointment. Um, Is that the only vacancy? Do they, do they have more than one? I... I think it's the only one, but I would have to check the roster to be confident about that. Yes, that's, that's the only one. That's the only vacancy. Until March. Motion to approve the uh, appointment of Adrian it's, it's Stevenson. I have not had the privilege of meeting them in person, so I'm... Stevenson, it looks like. But, okay. Okay. 
Okay, we have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 A three person bird really moves things along. <laughs> okay. Uh, Next up, uh, the for the Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee, uh, they are recommending that John O'Keefe be appointed to the committee. Mm -hmm. And again, no other, we haven't heard from others. I haven't heard from anybody else. I'm pretty sure they do have more than one open seat, though. Am I correct? Um, no, we're back to the one. Okay. Uh, but John has come forward. He's been out of a couple of times. You guys had a chance to meet. They're not elected. Yep, she came meet, meet. Perfect. But even so, if you're filling the vacancy, this is supposed to be. Perfect. Uh, motion to appoint John Akeep to the Racial Justice and Social Equity Committee. Yeah, okay. We have a motion for John Akeep. Do we have a second? Aye. Aye. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Excellent. Congrats to Jana um, and Adrian both. Uh, next up, we have a resignation from the tree board. Uh, Lauren Wang Finkelman is stepping down from the tree board. She's moving out of the area and won't be able to be an active member anymore. Motion to accept resignation um, and send a thank you letter. Second. Do I need to say the name? Uh, yeah, Lauren uh, um, Finkelman. That's fun to say the name, right? I knew it. I said it, I set it up. And you had a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Uh, sorry that she's moving out of town mostly. Yeah, yes, she's here through March. Be gone April 1st. Okay, so the appointment will come in. Oh, uh, so. Uh, so to go along with that, should we post a vacancy on the tree board as per? Yeah. Probably North should North. when it gets. Yes, we probably should, and just stating it would begin April first. Okay, that wasn't made overly clear, but sure. Yeah, agreed. Um, okay. Um, I just want to make myself one note. Say that again, say that out loud. What are you what are you saying? I, I was wondering about the uh the appointment that we did for the planning commission is stated to be through March of 2024. Mm -hmm. And if it were an elected position, it could only be for, for that term. For the next, yeah, mm -hmm. until the next regular election. Right. But since it's appointed, it, we can probably make the appointment to fill the base of the term. And beyond. Yeah, as part of our, we'll have to just remember this when we go through after the town meeting day, we do the appointments. That'll be an important point. Okay. Okay, uh, Scribner Bridge Engineering Study. Um, I think we had the one that you wanted to add. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, yep. About the proclamation. The proclamation. I don't have a lot of information, so I'm going to. So start. I'm going to I'm going to take this one if you don't mind, Thank and you. find what I need. My kids. You see, to join us. Where are we at? Um, we, we have a we new agenda to... item. It's the proclamation yep. for. Oh, Sergeant. I saw that. That's good. So Eric had requested that we consider. Um, giving a proclamation to Millie um, to recognize, um, just make sure that I'm saying the right thing. Dinner. Would you like some dinner? I'm good, thanks. Do you want to read it from here? Some note, oh yeah, I think you know, there. Um, So we want to recognize Millie Sargent's 95th birthday. She served 31 years in early childhood education in the community 
I think most of us went through her at one point or another, um, if you grew up in Johnson. And which I realize now that no one other than me and Evan, <laughs> maybe this applies to. Uh, and Millie served her community as well as her nation in um, during wartime as a wave. So I think this is a fine thing to do for Millie. Move to approve the proclamation you had written. What's the date? Um, birthday is on the 10th. Yeah, the, the proclamation the sixth is for day of February. Day. It's for the 6th day of February. Gotcha. Uh, second. Motion a second. Any discussion? Who's going to give it to us? Anybody want to? Alice? It's not very long. We probably should. Let me send you a uh, picture. Um, I can. My only concern is you already know about my schedule, which means I would have a very hard time doing it this week. I can. I don't know if Millie gets out of the house much. I don't think she has. I haven't seen her for several years. So I mean, you can. Um, and Duncan, before you had mentioned maybe putting in a frame. Yeah, I've got frames on. If I do, oh, perfect. That would be lovely, Evan. Or Eric could. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be moving around much this week. He still thinks they, they may go on vacation on Wednesday. Sure. Oh my gosh, are you kidding That's me? That's what Linda told me. Doctor, with the small. Can we? It's three. Are we on the Scribner Bridge now? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, we didn't talk about. Oh. So you're definitely okay. You're gonna do it. Cool. There's a motion and a second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. In their signature. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Scribner Bridge. 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 Yep. Oh, we are focused. Brian. All right. So next up is our, uh, the engineering study for Scribner Bridge. We'd approved this a while ago. We had some difficulties with the state's accounting system recognizing our UEI number, um, which replaces the SAM number for federal registration. Um, so this is getting back on track, something that we have, We've done some work on previously. Um, LCPC it has offered for to do grant administration for this for us, which uh, would be a I think a helpful service. Uh, you know that uh, Rob is familiar with the different funding sources we might be able to use for construction, uh, the requirements that we need. Uh, for the engineering study to be compatible with the different funding, the different construction funding sources. Um, and so I will be leaning on him pretty heavily, whether I'm handling the grant administration or not, turning a little bit more of the duties over to Rob would be helpful to me and his time is reimbursable through the, the grant itself. So for tonight, do you just need the board's thoughts on LCPC administering the grant? Uh, I need the board's approval to uh, either have myself or Beth sign the grant, the sub-grant administration that. agreement. It's eight packet page five. I'll move that, Beth. Do you want to sign or are you okay? Uh, Where is it? You don't care? So then I'll move it. That we have Brian sign the sub-grant approval. For the second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. All right. Hold that. I know it gets us. How far are we in now? We are in deep. The answer is more deep. than halfway through now. Where should we be? What's looking? the next packet page? Yeah. All right. So the next page is packet page 35. There's only like 50 pages on here. 35. Oh, okay. That's actually further than that because that is our insurance. 
Are we supposed to? Oh, it's back. It's back at page 37. Okay. So public, for the public private partnership. Yep. So this is another grant that we've been interested in and it's been slowly making its way through. Um, this is the grant to fund construction of uh, the improvements that the Vermont Electric Co-op needs in order to qualify under the new stormwater regulations. Um, the reason it looks good as a, a partnership opportunity is uh, they are overbuilding what they need for their services so that we can attach to it from the um, the uh, Jewett property if we need to for stormwater mitigation off of that property. And the board had previously requested that they uh, that they needed to grant us an easement across uh, the in order for us to, to complete the, the hookup when we needed it. Uh, they are willing to do that. They don't have anything drawn up yet. Um, we can sign the grant agreement pending or we can sign the grant agreement in advance. Uh, one of the board's pleasure is. Why haven't they drawn something up for an easement? Uh, I think I think they would like us to present something to them. I think that it would probably come down to, again, us using our attorney to draw up an agreement. Like They've been waiting now. So they want yeah. the taxpayers to pay for the attorney fees and everything to do an easement that for right now they're the sole beneficiaries of. But they're over building it for us. Understood, but right now they are the only beneficiary of it. So and on his initial construction, no one else will be hooking up to it. Right. But it would provide significant cost savings to us if we're able to find for that for the do it. Oh. Not being an engineer, I I think that that's a a fair assessment. Only that, if it would meet whatever at the time is the spec, right? You know, there could be a whole different stormwater infrastructure yeah. needed from there altogether. Yes. It's not like we're going to be able to forego all stormwater. I doubt it. No, I, I would assume we would have to get stormwater permit, but if that is there and available. I don't. Well, like you said, again. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like, when are they going to change the rules? You know? In five years, yeah. if, and it might not be big enough for a full build out. I don't know how many gallons per day it's rated for. It would. It would probably not cover all of the Jewett property, all of the stormwater mitigation that that would need. But it would make a significant dent in what we need to construct for stormwater management. That could certainly be something that Tyler looks at and part of his uh, review, cost review, and design review. Yep, I, I would, you know, this gets it uh, into a, a much more concrete form that he'd be able to look at their documents, look at their design documents, and, and make a good estimate. And by Tyler, you mean Mumley? Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, do you know off the top of your head who the co-op's engineer is on that part of the budget? I don't know offhand. We worked with a couple different engineers during the design phase, and I, I don't know who. We didn't have to have a uh, I can't vote on this. But the co Which, um, in previous meetings, if you're going to recuse yourself, maybe you should recuse yourself from the conversation as a whole, not just from voting. I, I can't uh, recuse myself. I definitely would like to support this. I am blown away that they haven't provided an easement and that they expect the town to pay for the fees of an easement for something that 
they need to, but they're the sole beneficiary up until we hook in. Would you like to make a motion, Duncan? <laughs> um, do we have any idea of what the cost, what our attorney's fees might be to secure an easement or to draft the language for an easement? There's nothing complicated about this one, so I would imagine a standard form that they have would likely work. Yeah, I, I can't imagine it's going to be a huge expense. It would be nice to know. But the cost no. drafts easements all the time. They're not able to do it on their own property. Yeah, I have a good question. Um, I will not support any taxpayer funding going towards this easement. Which means we won't have a quorum. Like, we don't have enough for, if he's going to vote no, we wouldn't have enough for a motion anyway. It could be pending. But we could have a motion. We could have a motion. It would be, 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 yeah, that's true. Uh, it could be pending an easement and the co-op agreeing to pay for the costs for that easement. The village needs to have some standard easement language you know, like electric lines, uh, but we could probably substitute electric line for yep, some water and sewer line. Yeah, water and sewer line ones too. I mean, we could, could we could we try and draft with our own personnel a standard easement for review by the co-op? I, mean, I, I don't it's a pretty simple that's I think it's a pretty simple easement. That's why I'm surprised they can't do it themselves. They do it for a living with power wires buried and overhead and burial, which is the same pretty much as storm water. Is it a matter of we just haven't asked to be volunteer to do this? We didn't volunteer. Um, I don't remember exactly how the conversation went. I didn't volunteer to do it, but I didn't think I didn't think it was a problem for us to provide an easement. I, I didn't push back on, on doing it. I just don't want to sit here and like act like the cop is doing something wrong when we don't actually know that. Yeah, I, I imagine that they didn't think it would be an issue for us to do it. What, what, what kind of issue is it if we don't sign this agreement tonight? Is it going to cause loss of funding or? It's not going to cause loss of funding. If we already have templated easements that the village uses, let's just try and do it. Let's just take a templated easement and do it and send it to co-op and see if that is acceptable. If not, they'll give us feedback. Like, I don't want to just push this down the road for the sake of pushing it down the road. I don't feel like there's a really good reason why we can't just get this off our plates. So in that case, Personally. I would know that we accept the agreement and that we provide the co-op a draft easement using town staff to draft the easement. Okay. So you're motioning. Is that for, is there a signature spot for you, Brian? Is pretty sure we've already signed something. We've signed a couple things with this. Uh, packet page 39 has the signature page. So, your motion is for Brian to sign pending what you said. Uh, Sure. Are, are we in this case the subrecipient, Brian? Yes. 
So if we've signed this, why don't we have a copy of a sign of a signed? Why isn't this signed? I don't I think that we've signed some of the preliminary paperwork. I don't think that we've signed the grant agreement itself yet. And so I noticed up above it says Johnson legal legal name, Johnson Village and Town. Can we just put village in there? We've had this conversation like five times, I feel like this Johnson town and village. This is not the first time we've had this conversation. Yeah. And honestly, I think the last time Brian brought this up, he mentioned that you know the expectation was that we were going to provide the easement. Is that why the UA the UEI is a problem? Uh the UEI was not a problem for this one. It was go figure. Uh, something related specifically to the V-Trans agreement, and that's the only time we've had trouble with it. Because the UEI registered name is Johnson Town and Village. It literally makes my eyes twitch. It is. That's what it says on packet page 37. Thirty-seven. Number twenty box twenty six. Do we share a UEI number with the village? No. Okay. I will make that request. I'll I'll make that request change uh, with the state to get the village struck and. Uh, yeah, we'll make sure that. But up above it said granting name town. It does. Yeah. Yeah, we'll double check with the federal registration and make sure that that is it. They're not getting it from there. I don't know where they're getting it from, but we'll make sure that they're not getting it from there. The other thing that I, I'm not, so on page 39, it says town of it, that's what you were bringing up before. But um, so it matches the form, by the way. Um, why is there a red asterisk at the end of the question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good question. Because everything behind it is attachments and yeah, there's nothing that calls reference to what that's about. Anyway, sorry I derailed our easement discussion. I know we don't have an actual <laughs> motion yet, but I've got... There's a motion. Oh, there is. I'm sorry. Is there a second? There's a motion, but as of yet, I don't believe it. No, there's not a second. Well, something Beth would second it. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion Very about good. the easement specifically? Because the motion is about the easement, having the town draft the easement and sign contingent on, correct? Sign contingent on. What was the what was the motion, Donna? Um, does it originally include to accept the agreement and provide the call to draft easement to the town staff to draft the easement? And then Evan asked, is that pending what you said? And Evan said yes. So you guys can figure out what the wording would have to be for that. I haven't quite figured it out yet. So the pending part, I guess, would be acceptance by the co-op of the town's draft easement. Is that, is that the they would have to accept what the town employees yes. drafted. Yeah. Or provide other wording that would have to. And do we need an easement before we sign this? Yes. Okay. That's the board's so, decision. So the only. I would say yeah. Okay. So that's the only thing we have right now. We have the motion on the floor about the easement that the town staff will draft the easement, send to the co-op, and we will not proceed until we get acceptance from the co-op on that 
easement language. So is the motion just to draft an easement and send it to them and see if they accept it and not anything about signing it if they do accept it? Correct. That's not the motion I read. Oh. I think they can sign it. Yes. Brian can sign it. Brian can sign the easement the agreement, but not this contract agreement. Uh, my motion was to approve this agreement pending their receipt and approval of a easement drafted by the town. Okay. And my understanding was that was what he was motioning to. Cool. If we have an easement, though, we need to get formal signature and sign up of the easement, too. No, it's an easement from them to us. Up to us. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Cool. Got it. I think we're good. good. Are we there? We're there. Okay. Ready? And we're we doing so good. good. So, all those in favor? Me. Aye. 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 Yeah, every, and every, Mark every, is recused. Okay. Okay. Wow. This is good. good. All right. They've been really And Brian, you're going to make the change. Yeah. Cha you're going to try to make the changes to the yeah, PDI sorry, the registered name on the on the form that's on package page 37, and also the reference on page 39, yep. and anywhere else that it appears. You can work with Rosemary some standard language for easement. Yes. Yeah. I can get it from Rosemary, I can get it from Eric. Myself. If you don't mind, will you send this whole pack of papers to somebody, Lydia maybe, in the office and have her look for the town of Johnson, Johnson Town and Village language? Sure. You're lovely. All right. So next up is a letter of support for the Lamoille Valley Bike Tours. Uh, they're applying for a uh, recovery and revitalization program. Uh, one of the things that's a requirement for the grant that they're applying for is to demonstrate local support. So they have provided us with a model um, letter of support that they'd like us to Fill out and send it. And what page is that on? Uh, 61. Yep. So. So this will go to uh, expanding their business. They want to set up more shuttles uh, so that they can help transport people who are going to take advantage of the bikes. Um, and generally, yeah, it, it's of use for their their particular business. <laughs> uh, we would not be a sub grantee in this. We would not have any grant administration duties. It would just be: do we support a local business taking this initiative? Uh, so I wouldn't. I'm heavily supportive of it. This is. I would have liked to have seen what we would sign. Heavily supportive of local business. So I, I can't say no. I just, this is. Are we adding the town letterhead and the date and just changing your organization to the town? And then are you going to write a paragraph overview of the project or are they? I assume they're going to write a short paragraph of the work. I'll get a little bit of help from Jim on, on that because I'm not terribly familiar other than I know it incorporates a shuttle. Could, uh, um, I'm going to say that I motion to approve a letter of support um, from the town for the Lamoille Valley Bike Tours uh, authorizing the chair design. And implicit in that is there the concept that I'm, I'm implicit in the concept and the chair has to review it to something yeah it's trying to get me to work yes i'm fine with that i would want to read it anyway honestly. i didn't ask for your permission i made the motion 
I would, I would, I would, I would heavily, I would heavily suggest that you decline <laughs> getting a <laughs> like the idea, but I won't because I will do that happily. Okay, we have a second. Any other discussion? I, the only other discussion is I'd like to see it too. Not, not that I'm gonna. Um, yeah, it, we, it, we, it would be nice for all it. board members to. I yeah, just distribute it now. Yeah, yeah. I'll send it to the board once I finish it. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Do we want to vote? Yes, yeah, so you do. So yeah, I'm just thinking. Oh. Yeah, we do have to vote. Um. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um. Rail trail planning. So this is a little bit more open ended, but we had some conversations of about what can we do and what do we need to do around uh, around the rail trail and supporting local business there. Um, we've invited a handful of folks from the community who might have some input, but uh, you know, as usual, we'll, we'll have the board. Just Start the discussion if you. So, who did you invite from the public? Can you introduce people? Sure. Uh, we have members from Johnson Works, uh, Joey and Carrie. Yeah. Hi. And you, you have to remind me, I'm sorry. Gigi. Gigi. I'm a new resident. I live on Railroad Street. So, we have some input for that. The road trip that. Perfect. Great, thank you. And Moyle Valley Bike Tours, we're gonna try and join us remotely. You can't see from here if they have or not. There's one icon that I don't recognize. Hi folks, <clears throat> this is Jim Rose calling in. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Hi Jim, we can hear you, thank Hi, you. Sorry, I missed you on that last topic too. I did wanna confirm we have some details in the email that I had forwarded to Brian um, and uh, hopefully that can just shed some light on our on our um, project related to the grant. But thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. Okay, so rail trail planning. Let's jump in. Let's dive in. So, does anyone on the board want to kick off, or would you rather hear from others first? I'm fine with public input. Yeah. Yeah, with me. All right. Uh, does anyone in the public want to start with thoughts? Gigi, it sounds like you already have a bunch of things queued up. Do you want to kick us off? Sure, do you mind? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I live at 264 uh, Railroad Street in Dunham. I just purchased the house about this time last year. And I have been actively there since March of 2022. And it is a lively section of the street. Um, when I first moved here, I had applied, I had been suggested that I apply for the beautification grant. And I did that and was awarded $200, which I thought was a very generous amount um, to uh, sort of beautify my front yard, which I did. I ended up giving the money for the beautification grant back to them, thinking that it probably could have a better purpose than, than giving it to me. I'm not sure exactly how it ended up being used, but in the meantime, at Christmas, it fall, sort of fall together, um, there was a notice in Front Porch Forum uh, by Diane Lohillier saying that the food shelf had been closed due to a storm. The food shelf was actually supposed to be open that Friday from nine to noon. The storm didn't hit until the evening. I was very unhappy. Well, sad for the people who might have had to use that resource or expected to open to use that resource right before Christmas. We're unable to. Um, a little while ago, as to try and keep that from happening in the future, I went to the food shelf and introduced myself, and then hopefully this month I'll be contacted about training. Well, the beautification committee has spent a lot of money on hiring artists to do murals to beautify the trailhead, et cetera, et cetera. The food shelf building is an absolutely stunning structure. And it is the gloomiest, most depressing place for any community support. You know, people who are going there, that's also at the trailhead. You know, you cannot avoid seeing that building no matter which direction you're coming from. And so it, I sort of was thinking that the beautification committee, if they sort of supported their efforts to beautify what we already have, and we have a wealth of 
artists and creative youth at Lamar Union High School. And I was thinking that maybe rather than pay an artist to do a mural, we could somehow recruit students or offer them the opportunity to maybe even get school credit, um, you know, for beautifying the, the area and making the rail trailhead um, a more appealing, friendly, welcoming place. Because also we need to be able to get people interested in stopping, looking at the art, and then perhaps getting them to town, to Main Street, which leads to my, my second point, which is Railroad Street is incredibly dangerous. Um, we have people who are walking dogs, walking children, just walking themselves. We have cars, rarely, the speed limit is posted at 25 miles an hour. Rare, I'm probably one of the only people who drive 25 miles an hour down that road. Um, I have seen people pass people on that road. I have almost been run over even this morning by someone who was going at least 50 miles an hour. Um, I don't know where, and this has been a concern of mine, even in addition to it being a safe thoroughfare for people coming into town from the rail trail and then continuing on their journey, maybe after having lunch at Jenna's, you know, or something. Um, anyway, I have not, I've been racking my brain for almost the year that I've been there. I don't think speed bumps are appropriate. I don't know if there is a spot to get another safe bike path through to get consumers or hopefully, you know, guests to come from the rail trail on the main street. But even maybe those those waves, you know, that where they, they sort of build the road in so only one car can go through at a time, they have some residential neighborhoods. Anyway, I just wanted to talk it out here. So we're talking about trying to get people from the rail trail to Johnson to support local businesses. Railroad Street is a very dangerous place um, currently in, in terms of speed and traffic and because of tractor trailer trucks that are going, their vehicles. I mean, I had one person tell me, well, my, my friend went by and they said you were yelling at them, so they waved and <laughs> telling them to slow down. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, anyway, so I don't know what can be done. I don't know if anything can be done, but it's a real concern, especially if we want to increase bike traffic or, you know, if they're taking the, um, going to rent the bike and then want to walk to town and then continue their bike tour. We really need to figure out a way to make people feel safe and welcome. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's what I, thank you for letting me share. Yeah, they're friendly speeders. That's yeah, what I get. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not great for age or anything. We don't have everybody. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank I appreciate it. Uh, Joey, do you have anything you want to add? We have a couple ideas. Um, you know, I, I drove up there today, and I know there's a couple maps on the outside of the trailhead. Um, but having like a big board with some. Um, squares or like having a map, but maybe then also having businesses buy into having like a square entered onto the map. Something that can be taken out and gone because we're not going to spend a whole bunch of money on a sign and then it's wrong in you know a year. But um, so each business can can purchase a square that might have a QR code to either their Facebook page or or their website. You know, two sons can have their menu on there. And so when people are stopping there, um, whether it be for a sporting event in Mill Park or on the rail trail, they can look at the board map and say, oh, here's all the things. And they can use their phone to check out what's there. And that's like, something has to be up there. Nobody's going to really know if they don't look up ahead of time. But I have seen um, following some of these Facebook pages that are for the rail trail that people are definitely planning. Like, I'm coming this summer, I'm coming in July, I'm coming in June. Um, which place do I want to stop at? Um, so we really need to make sure that we're keeping up with those Facebook pages. And anybody can create a Facebook page for this rail trail. So making sure that we're looking at the ones that have the most followers. In the, I heard there's going to be like an official um, Lamoille rail or a rail trail um, site or Facebook page that's not by vast or yeah I'm not sure yeah. but that's going to need to be kept up with and looked at responded to and commented on um, potentially Johnson Works can can definitely be a part of that um, 
And some of the other things were just, you know, making sure that that bridge, I know that the beautification committee has done a great job at trying to decorate that bridge and put lights and make it it's kind of like, like an entrance. So keeping that looking really nice is gonna be, I think, important. Um, having bike path or white lines, something that, it, whether we can have a bike path or not, because the road's not big enough or too dangerous, but something has to sort of direct people down that road. Um, so those are kind of my thoughts. I don't know if anybody had better ideas that just they wanted Johnson Works to try to do, but those are some things I can think of. Harry, got anything to add there? No, we, um, we haven't met this morning. We discussed all that stuff and then also like what's the bike storage going to be in town? Because there are a lot of rental bikes, those really, really expensive bikes. If they're rental and people like they own are even more expensive and they need to be in a safe spot, whether inside town building, that's going to be bikers' biggest concern. Or you have either no visitors or a lot of bike theft, I would assume. Um, or just lots of trees. I don't know. Or people complaining about that. Um, so, do you see that? Yeah, I'm curious about that. Can you, first of all, can you speak up? Um, <clears throat> my hearing isn't probably what it should be. Did I? I think I heard you say more bike racks. Uh, of something, yes, okay. yes, something to lock them up. You know, so if they're in town. Well, most they, people carry bike locks yeah. on their bikes if they if they want to secure their bikes. Porches or on the businesses or along the pipe, like the trees. Like, what's their vision of how many people are coming on a daily or weekly basis? You want to kind of specify who has a good safe spot for those. Like, like we have one at Sterling Market. The green. I don't know. I don't like. There's some at the green. At the but green, but like. There's several. Yeah. But if you're, if your whole idea is be at people who are biking, whether they're owning tandem or renting through the um, e-bike tours, that's just going to have that much more. So how many bikes do you actually have at a time right now? If everyone's got all their bikes in town right now, yeah. like 20? Okay. Yeah. You know, so that is the thought of what to do with them all. And then, like when you asked us here, what was your thought with Johnson Works? Like, uh, I guess for me as a consumer, if I'm coming off the bike trail, why am I stopping in Johnson? Was my first question. So I would look at like the businesses and then pull people in from that way. But I agree with your beautifying the food shop building. That unique thing. I was not sorry to take the time, I, but I did go and, and look at it today because I am a, a renovator and it looks as though it's real close to already being prepared because it hasn't been dealt with in so long, it hasn't been maintained in so long. That all we need is a little power blasting and then some volunteers and a cherry picker from Johnson Farm and Garden and some paint. I mean, I don't think that it would be that big. If you can take, well, if you can find the volunteers. <laughs> we oh, can no. use them. I know the guy who just cost a couple hundred bucks when he would get on the cherry picker because I was looking for that. Um, but I mean, I don't think that it could be uh, someone had mentioned because I brought it up and they said lead paint. I don't think that's an issue. I don't think it's an environmental issue for doing the outside of the building. The inside, I'm not concerned about so much because um, that can just be, but the outside is definitely, I feel it's cosmetic, it structurally looks. It is, it is an issue. There's lots of issues with that building. Huge issue. Mm -hmm. the exterior, well, even just getting a coat of paint and make people maybe want to invest, you know? Set up a snack bar there for the bikers and say, hey, if you want a real meal, go into town. So to go back to your question about Johnson Works, like what is our vision for Johnson Works? I guess my response to you is the reverse of that question. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not the one putting in the effort at Johnson Works at the moment. Uh, that's why I would flip it back on you. Like, what is your vision at this mm -hmm. point? And so I think Johnson Works. <laughs> um, I think getting the board, you know, like calling Rick Dick graphics and finding out, you know, and 
finding a place on the we can I can handle that and I would enjoy doing that. Um that's step one, right? And then we'll see. And I don't know how much space there is. Like I said, I went up there today, but it's not, you can't get at the building curve. Well, you can if you have such, but I um didn't go right in, but I think that's that step one definitely needs to get done by this summer too. I thought there was a great big paint piece of plywood with a map into the village that Jen Burton has done. There is a big where is where is that? Isn't that right by the that's across the trail from the cow? Yes. Right. Yeah, where isn't that station facing kind of the south of fields as you're on the trail by the uh, it's it's uh dual sided. So you can see it from either direction. Um and yeah, it's next, it's near the world cow, kind of near the uh the intersection. Right. Yeah. Well, real trail traffic, real trail. But to that point, but to the point that Joey was making earlier is if you're at the trailhead, you're not far enough to see the map. And what makes you want to go beyond the trailhead if you aren't like where do you, where do you consider the trailhead? I mean anything that's right. I am con considering the Ted Alexander building, the trailhead. The trailhead. Okay. And when I say that, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know, but that's what I consider. Mm -hmm. And I really am thinking about anything that's right on the trail. Because if it were me and I was passing through, yes, I would stop and look at things, but I'm not going to venture away from it to go exploring unless there's something that piques my interest on the trail. And I think that that big pink sign is on the trail. It is. Well, but um, that pink sign does not have a lot of information about local businesses. So Joey's idea of the QR code, I think that's a brilliant idea. I love the right. idea of like a push pin with QR code, something like that. Um, that's yeah, a, something that's idea. replaceable so that we don't have to redo the whole thing to change a, you know, a business or a pointer. You know, even the same business wants it to go to someplace new now. With something like that, where we can swap pieces in and out, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good idea. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd love to. So, if you have other thoughts on what this means for Johnson Works, like I guess I would just ask you you know, what your proposal is that you would like to explore. And if there are ways the town can help you, we certainly would be welcome, welcome you to bring the ideas. I don't know that we'd fully support them, probably depending on cost usually is a deciding factor. Um, but yeah, we should definitely have the dialogue. Oh, I saw that. I think it would be nice if the town, um, you know, would be able to take the initial board, but then I went to the individual businesses and asked for their you know, this is going to advertise your business up at the, would you like this? Mm -hmm. And kind of put that as a, okay. but I will, like I said, I'll look into it and see. It would really be useful on our part to know roughly how many businesses might actually have an interest in doing that. Because mm -hmm. that would obviously depend on how big the board was. Definitely. I think the worst thing that we could do is have a huge board with Two or three panels on it wouldn't speak well. Yeah. Um, so, and it might be more than businesses too, like maybe other entities like nonprofits or yeah, colleges. Yeah, and sure. Library. Um, there's actually quite a bit that could be put on there depending. We have a couple of businesses right now that could be on there. Um, yeah, that would be nice. I'm sure how long they're going to. So, but there's, you know, if you're talking, you're just even Maple Fields, a grocery store, a public library art galleries, um, the two restaurants, cafe. And things outside of town. Yeah, well, the other thing is, if you could put a sidewalk all the way to my farm stand. <laughs> that'd be lovely. <laughs> I would get right on that. Uh, that's Village, though. Uh, Jim, yeah, yeah. I to call you. Oh, I just wanted to, thank you. And um, I just want to echo some of the comments that have been made, um, but also acknowledge just you know, having this conversation in a forum to uh, have it is very valuable, <clears throat> I think. And as I'm listening to a little bit, I think um, 
you know, perhaps something to build off of as well. Uh, just just having a group of like minded folks from the business community, from the town side of things, um, taking some time with this focus is super important. Um, what I can share is just some of the things that we've heard and some of the things from our perspective. Uh, being on the trail and what we hear from folks stopping to talk or folks just going by. Um, and we hit a couple of them, but, uh, you know, on my list was, uh, you know, just planning for new visitors. The trail's going to be done. The state's investing a lot of money, big marketing plan coming out this spring. <clears throat> so we will be seeing a lot more traffic and thinking about how they move safely in and around our town. Uh, Railroad Street was mentioned a bunch. Um, you know, we see a lot from where we are. That intersection, the one road crossing we have is, I chalk it up to being pretty dangerous. Um, are you busy... referring? Yeah, which crossing are you referring to? Where the rail trail crosses Railroad Street, right where the pink sign is. And yep. Right where the um, World Cow art installation is um but a lot of close calls um and um you know food for thought but safety getting into town um someone mentioned the share roads and i know we put those down before but emphasizing the, trying to emphasize those in a way maybe trying to paint a little lane there all kinds of things we could think about uh, but safety and getting into town, because the second thing that we hear the most, you know, as far as what they say is, what what is there to do in Johnson? And we're always happy to point folks uh, in that direction and, and what they're looking for. Um, and then I, I, well, the other thing I was hearing was once they're in town, you know, where to park a bike, how to integrate with the business community. I think just having a general awareness in town that, hey, these folks are coming um, and, you know, the message is we, we all need to kind of plan for that. And hopefully they're coming and coming in to visit these businesses. Signage. I love that idea about uh, the trailhead. And we definitely consider the um, Alexander building to be the trailhead. Um, a great place to include all that kind of information. A lot of people focus on that. A lot of people park there and launch from there. A lot of people ride past that. Um, signage, information. Um, without going... Uh, too deep, but though uh, we really consider this rail trail as a, a huge uh, resource. Um, the state is injecting a lot of money. They have this new grant program, community grants. Uh, they just had their first award for those. Um, and a number of communities got funding for trailheads and, and um, connecting the trail into town. Uh, but Johnson's got so much going for it. You know, the rail trail, the long trail, the paddler's trail, to name a few natural resources i know doug moldy used to um talk about where the trails meet um you know food the studio center arts the college uh covered bridges swimming holes um it's got a lot going for it we are a destination tourism drives a lot in this this county the two largest employers are in this county are the two resorts um so just having a an eye towards all of that um, I think can only uh, help Johnson out in terms of, um, you know, to bring back planning for the rail trail. Great. That's good feedback. Thank you. Can I make an observation? Please. So um, I think this is great to start this conversation. This just for the record, this is the first time that the board will have talked about the rail trail and its potential impact. So it's a great, great place to start the conversation. I'm wondering, and I'm, I don't know how to, how to, how to categorize this, but I, I think it would be a good idea. In all honesty, I, I don't, you know, Kyle, you had mentioned uh, the vision piece. Well, you know, the vision piece is only part of it. The implementa implementation piece is the part that really needs to be done. You know, we can sit here and come up with great ideas all night long, but if we don't have the ability to implement them, they really aren't worth the paper they're written on. So uh, as I think about the rail trail, I think about how do we, how do we actually make some of this stuff happen? Um, some great ideas have been thrown out tonight. I 
I think about, I'm a user of the rail trail. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of the rail trail. I think it's a great, a great thing, but the, the linkage between the rail trail and the village is and always has been one of the major impediments of, of the building. So anything that we can do to try and, you know, make that access better, safer, um, is, is certainly something we want to think about, I think. And if there's some grant money out there, so much the better. Um, but I also think that, um, I think you were sort of hitting on this in a way, and I would put this back in the business community to some degree, how, what is there to draw people off the rail trail into the village? Um, right now, we don't have a hotel, we don't have bed and breakfast that really caters the rail trail. Is that something that, you know, can happen, can be developed? And I, I, I think one of the things we could look at and should look at is our revolving loan fund to see if there are changes that we can make to that revolving loan fund that would support some of those business activities so that we could loan money um, to the business community specifically geared and targeted towards, you know, rail trail type of thing. So I think it's a great conversation. It's just the beginning. I wonder if we should convene some sort of working group to talk about these ideas and report back to the board for that vision increase. And I, I don't know how that is going to work. We should drive that or what, but I just throw it out there. Yeah. Interesting idea. Mm -hmm. uh, what do other, others on the board think? I tend to agree with Duncan. I think it was a work group of volunteers that would be willing to. I think they'd bring a lot. I really love Joy's idea. I'd like to call them interactive sign, I guess, if you will, at natural resources as well as businesses that could be on there. And and it is hard to draw people that far down Railroad Street with it being how it is. Um, if I had, the select board had $20 million today to dump on this one task, I'm sure we'd see a lot. <laughs> um, but it's, it's going to take time for sure. Uh, I really like the idea of that interactive map. I do too. Yeah. And I'd like to see something done. It's jointly owned, uh, the old Petro property and the mill house being part of it. Um, there's definitely something we could do there, but that doesn't necessarily draw people into the village and into the other side of town. It kind of just gives them a little something to do out there, which they already can go around Old Mill Park. Go ahead. I think that um, <clears throat> Johnson Works in in the community should. My sense is like I had some people that came here to peddle this. They look for an Airbnb in Johnson or Hyde Park, and they come to the town, and then they go to the trail which is a different way of thinking of going to the, coming to the trail to the town. And I think that we should probably have a better social media presence with our Airbnbs that are in town and the, the little campground thing. Though, cause that's what we would re really like is people to say, oh, I'm gonna come to Johnson. It's halfway to either way and be in town and go to the coffee shop and, be in town and then use the rail trail um, because then they go away and talk about how great the rail trail is that's exactly yeah. it versus pedaling you know that th that's the other half of the equation it's the people that are yeah. pedaling through bringing them in town i just assume bring people to town and i think part of that is our airbnb i don't know how many are in johnson does johnson works know how many airbnbs are in town they don't have the numbers but it's definitely been like that before there's yeah. quite a few there's and are the Airbnbs aware that the rail trail is going to be a draw for them and that people will come and stay at their Airbnb if they can get access to the rail trail? Because I think that that is something that we need to we need to um, 
as, as Johnson Works, needs to be promoting our Airbnbs that are here because we don't have enough to do a motel in town. And plenty of people have looked at it. And even when the college was in full swing, um, it was going to be a tough thing to do. So we're not going to get people here for a motel, but we are going to get people to come to our Airbnbs and then paddle the trail. And we're in an ideal location. And while they're here, they can pedal the trail. They can, they need to know about Beard Swimming Hole. They need to know about the, the Carver Bridges. They need to know about all the hiking. All the yeah. hiking. Yeah. I, met a guy, I had a guy come apply for an apartment last week that is moving to Johnson because he was hiking the long trail and came off. I have seen multiple yeah. people come to Johnson because they're hiking the long trail. Right. Unfortunately, they stop at the Dollar General before they get into town. <laughs> but, but anyway, she's moving to town. And he has a PhD in physics just because he liked Johnson. Mm -hmm. So he can find a place to live. Yeah. I think the other thing around the rail trail, and I have thought about this a lot, I don't have an answer, but Railroad Street shouldn't be the only way to get to town. Just leave that there because it gets you thinking about a lot of different things, but. Um, it would be really nice if it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's well, important to remember that it is an all season trail. And we've been talking mostly about pedestrian and bike use. I was, There's a lot of snowmobiles. I was just going to mention being able to have snowmobiles get into the village yeah. as well. But yeah. there's, there's an opportunity there, too. We also have a lot of cross country skiing on that trail from different towns and sled dogs. Yeah. Can't hear you. And sled dogs. All winter sports. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they come, come, come. Yeah. Kind of yeah, I, I ski it. I ski it myself. But I, I, I will just say I was in Newport yesterday and it's a different scene. That in the Northeast Kingdom, there's more snowmobiles, there's more snowmobile traffic, and there's more snow. Um, I can tell you. But there's a lot of people. Um, you know, if you had the right incentives, um, I think more people, you know, more things is we need snow. Um, which haven't been a great past few years. But Maybe the town could take that up too. Yeah. <laughs> Make snow. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we have a lot of we have a lot of trails that when we talk about trails, they just don't come to mind in our area. But like the Cricket Hill trails up by the call up by the high school, they could easily connect to Johnson. The trip the there's a ton of trails up behind the college. There's a lot of land back there and there's a lot of trails back there. And those could pretty easily connect to long trail and other things um and rail trail goes through you know the it goes pretty much parallel with route 15 for a long while so there are multiple places that you could get across to and I, I know the people at maple hill barn that have worked hard to get people permission to have people come off the rail trail to have a sign there through the nazarene church parking lot and come to their place yeah and so and I, you, make, you make a good point though about the, the other half of the equation is people who are coming to Johnson, perhaps for other things, but who are going to use the rail trail too. Yeah. Or perhaps they're coming because of rail trails there and they need to know about the other things that yeah. are available. And I have no sense of, I mean, oftentimes you see bike tours that are compelling at 15 hit the green in the summer and there'll be a van with a pile of bikes there. I don't know if that's going to happen on the rail trail, but I suspect it is going to happen. Jim's going to try and make it happen, right, Jim? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, because yeah. it's pretty easy to envision somebody coming up from Boston and going to St. Johnsbury and pedaling on Saturday to Johnson or Morrisville Spending the night somewhere, pedaling to Swanton because it's downhill. I mean, the river flows downhill to Swanton from here, and getting picked up and sent back to Boston or Montreal <laughs> on Sunday. So I, as it relates to our grant, um, the launch of our shuttle program in the spring, uh, we're looking to do exactly that, where we'll be offering <laughs> east and westbound. Um, shuttle service from St. Johnsbury to Swanton. Uh, not every day to start, but um, but to market that exact type of thing, you know, a two-day, a three-day tour, 
and keep in mind, and it's been mentioned, Johnson is about the halfway point. Uh, it's going to be a really um, interesting location for folks planning their own adventure, looking to do it in two days um, and three days or more. We really think is a really cool thing as well. Encouraging folks, we'll be encouraging folks uh, in, in marketing the trail in this fashion um, to spend some time, spend a week and a couple of days. But either way, Johnson is in a great spot for for people to stay. And one thing I'll also add, because we were talking about the Airbnbs, but thinking about way folks places for people to stay for one night as well is a um, something to think about and is that because a lot of airbnbs have a minimum two night stay yes yeah, i think it's in three kyle yeah i just wanted to say that i think it's really important that we that we do look at this from all those angles people coming to johnson first and going from here and people coming from elsewhere to johnson so to be really being you know mindful about planning from for both directions and having something to offer um, either way and doing that simultaneously and something that um feedback i was going to bring from folks that couldn't come tonight was just this i this idea of having the one night stay be more available and having more camping options and here we are we have you know that rail that welcome center is surrounded by fields there's water, there's electricity, there's, you know, um, people really are going to be looking for those one night camping opportunities and where is something that's right in the village that they don't have to then figure out transportation to get to other than walking, biking, riding. So um, capturing that audience and then also just, I think this is something that ARPA money should definitely be going towards. Marketing, figuring out how to make you know, the um, the food shelf, we need to paint that building. We need to, you know, we need to make everything along the rail trail just really inviting and beautiful and um, not, you know, memorable in a good way, <laughs> not in a complicated, not taken care of way. So I think that it's really important that we really take care of our assets on that end, well, the business community and whatever the board and the village trustees can do to help the downtown area be as vital and vibrant as possible. Thanks, Kyle. Um, one thing that Jim said, Jim, you said this, and it struck a chord with me, and you said, let people plan their own adventure, which some people very much want to do, and other people want it planned for them. And it makes me wonder if maybe we should be trying to connect with big companies that plan things for people um, to try to get Johnson Town out there specifically uh, in competition with the Stowe's of the world. Yes. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe yeah. In our area. Yeah, I think. I think about that a lot. Uh, I think um, I was thinking about um, the comment about ARPA money, and I just wanted to second that. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunity here and um, trying to find our identity and what, what makes us stick out because there are now 18 other towns along the trail kind of thinking the same thing. Um, and not that we're in direct competition, but I think we do want to just have an awareness about that and uh, really be forward thinking about supporting the trail and, and um, all in the name of, of, I think a lot what we're talking about is economic development too, as we keep tying it to the town. So whatever we can do to support that uh, and a lot of ideas were mentioned tonight, but um, you know, big, big opportunity for economic development and, and uh, hopefully you know, finding some dollars and, and grants and monies associated with that to help us out. Yeah. Well, one question for Jim. Um, which way is the, the traffic on the rail trail typically? You, have any you know, we see a lot of traffic uh, either direction. Yeah. I, I could, you know, we, we bring a lot of folks in from the Stowe and Smugglers areas with... Um, 
with our business and, and we market in those areas. Uh, but for the folks that are already on the trail, people are coming to uh, Johnson to park because they know that, that it's about the halfway point. So they can go either direction. A lot of folks park in Johnson. One day they'll go to Hyde Park in Morrisville. Next time they come, they'll go to Jeffersonville. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of folks are coming from for a shorter ride from Hyde Park. Um, some folks are coming from Morrisville and we do see a lot of folks coming from Jeffersonville. Um, but things are going to be, you know, different now. Now we're in the middle of the middle. That's right. Um, and I expect, I still expect this area to be the most popular, um, because of what we have here, which is unique to our 17 mile stretch is we're wedged between these two tourist and, uh, resort destination centers. And a lot of the other parts of the trail don't have that. They have some very cool and unique things that make them interesting and unique. But from an economic standpoint, we uh, we certainly benefit from that. I would imagine as things get busier, we'll also uh, benefit from our large amount of parking that we have at Old Mill Park. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. for convenience factor. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One, one thing that, you know, we don't really think about a lot, um, Jim is absolutely right, the dynamic is going to change. As soon as the Cambridge, the Bakersfield, Fairfield, Sheldon piece is actually open and able to be traveled, that's going to change the dynamic a lot. Well, in the, in the other direction, too. It, well, I'm, in the other direction, too. In, in, in Sheldon, you can also jump on the Cisco to get on Right. So, you know, there we say there's 96 or 90, whatever it is, 93, 96 miles of trail, but there's also the Cisco rail trail. That's that's not an insignificant rail trail. That's been in operation for, you know, quite a while. Yeah. So. I'm going to just give us a three minute warning and maybe to wrap this up, you had suggested a working group. Is everyone, and I think you had supported the idea of a working group. And Mark, are you in support of that idea? Yeah, but I think we do have Johnson Works. Is, but I, what well, Johnson think? Works is business focused, so we need to make sure we're covering our bases, I think. Okay. Maybe we can have representation from a number of different places. Sounds good. So maybe what we should do to be inclusive is publish this publicly. Um, Maybe even put an ad in the paper and have people submit if they'd like to be involved and why they'd like to be involved and what they can contribute, what they think they can contribute. Um, and make sure that we also push that out to all of our town committees. So Facebook po- posting, front porch for a posting, maybe an ad, and then um, direct <clears throat> to all of our committees. Do you all support all of those avenues for getting applicants for working group together? Absolutely. Sounds good. Sounds good. Brian, did you get everything? Advertising a rail trail working group on social media, newspapers, direct committees. Social media, direct committees. And I would include things like you know, historical society, all of any, them, all, yeah. any and all town. We have a committees. list of all of the committee chair yeah. and vice chairs, and we'll, that's what I mean by pushing it out yeah. to all the committees. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on. Posting uh, road weight limits. All right. Next up. Thanks, everybody, for coming in on this topic, by the way. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, we've got the uh, road weight limits. Um, I've got the list from last year, what they were posted, or what we had posted. Um, we can just repeat the same list, or we could make changes if anybody so desires. What page is that? Uh, packet page 62. Maple Hill is all paved. I believe, because I think it actually does end halfway on that hill where Mount Bottomley Hill is. I don't, is, does that fall into the same circumstance considering it's all paved? 
Uh, the advice that we have is that we should post roads that are paved. Um, if they connect. Well, that smaller roads like Maple Hill, um, even if they're paved, can experience pretty significant damage if the sub base softens up enough. Um, okay. So, why, are, why are we only posting on one class four road? Reservoir? Riding stable. Oh, I guess two. Yeah. Two. Riding stable. Drag lot is. All know, right, so why are we posting class four roads? Why are they posting all of them? Or it, like this isn't a full list. All the class four roads is what I'm getting at. What's missing that you know off the top of your head? I can write the map. No, it's okay. Just Bay, you know, on. Oh. Basin Road is class four too, isn't it? There's one. I don't know. Okay. There's Town Highway twelve. There's Town Highway forty seven. Why don't we post those? Somebody have to drive through a swamp, but it's still posted. Crossbed Road, West Settlement Road. Riding Stable Road is also playing. Hey, everybody's making the point for me. I keep finding a bunch of these. I don't even have to do the whole thing. Continue. Okay. Vehicles that aren't actively refused to talk Riding Stable Road. My point is, why do we need? <laughs> why do we need to post it? But uh, do you need a motion to support this? Yes. Has Jason reviewed it? Yes. Motion to approve. Wait limits as presented. Uh, I agree with your assessment about class four. Uh -huh. I would be happy with a motion to approve exclusive of class four rounds. Strike, strike the class four rounds. That's exactly what I said. Perfect. Friendly amendment. Got it. Yeah. Okay, we have I'll a second. second. second Any further discussion? So the motion is to remove any class four rounds? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You might get the vote though. Yeah, I was just waiting to see it. Brian taking notes. Oh, gotcha. Oh. Then, okay. the practical matter, you know, if you post school bill road, you're you're also posting drag law road. Right. You, know, you can't get to drag law. You can't get to drag law yeah. without going up school bill. Yeah. Okay. Uh all those in favor. Aye. 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 have it. Next up. All right. Planning for town meeting. Yep. Um, so there's usually a couple extra items that the board may or may not wish to take advantage of around town meeting. Um, an easy one that's come up is uh, recreation. Many would like to serve coffee and little snacks and things starting in the morning um, as a, a fundraiser for rec. I like it. Are we going to spend more money on Dean's time doing this? Is it the committee or Dean? Uh, it was the committee that approached the committee did. Okay. Um, I don't know what they would, I don't know how they would break out who's doing what, but it was the committee that approached it. Okay. If they want Dean to work it and they're asking for Dean's time, I would argue we're not going to make as much, we're going to spend more on Dean's time they're going to make money for fundraiser. So I would not be supportive of that unless they can satisfy financials otherwise. But if the committee wants to do it, I would fully support it. Okay. The Historical Society typically has oh. highs. Are we, are we approving all those things? Yeah, or, or do they just by not happen? disapproving, you are approving. Well, yeah. No, I guess my question is... What kind of high? What kind of fighting you want? Kind of fighting you want. <laughs> <laughs> so this can make me change my decision. <laughs> um, Are you going to use Dean's time? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is that before town meeting or during town meeting? Or, or during and after? Uh, as long as the pie is full. What was the right? official sampler of the pie? To make sure it's okay. <laughs> I'd like to volunteer my time. Test, officially testing, testing it every okay, single okay, pod. We're getting off track here. So, um, sure, no yeah. problem with people who want to bring food in. And I think that we've had a request in the past for hot food from the school fundraisers, too, if I recall. They have, yep. they have requested. I was going to ask if the school would ask. Are they going to do lunch? The school going to do lunch? I said pizza and um, hot lunch. Well, they're stepping on Mark's toes by doing pizza. 
They had never stepped on my toes before. They just made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark's doing that. That may be the case again. Yeah. Well, oh, they might expect the phone call. I suspect I'll have to be at the select board meeting. But if yeah. they really thought about it, I'd be probably walking to make pizzas instead. Probably. <laughs> I don't think it'd take worse than that. <laughs> Name tag. Okay. Uh, um, but we probably else? do want to check with them to make sure they don't expect Mark to make pizza for them. But we, probably I can find other people to make pizza. Yeah. I always have yeah. volunteers to help make pizza. Yeah. Katie's the one I got the email from. Katie Worst. Okay. So fire her back an email if you don't mind saying contact Mark or the oven committee or something. <laughs> oh, okay. Pizza, I always make pizza. Yeah, this conversation can happen outside yep. of open. Yes. Yep. Um, so anything else for town meeting, Brian? Uh, we have on occasion had volunteers uh, do babysitting. Yeah, so I was going to ask about child care. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, are we okay with allowing people to, if we have volunteers to run the babysitting, allowing them to? I would just want to make sure that they are, at least somebody is, certified or licensed or all safety measures are in place at least one person but i would like to see child care there who is that that typically does the coordination uh actually kyle did a lot of that for us in the past are you volunteering this time or have you nothing like being put on the spot she has not <laughs> volunteered for it okay at this time I, I... so do you have somebody in mind other than kyle I was going to ask Kyle, who your we contracts were in the past, and if you could help me find someone who might take it over. Um, okay, so follow up on that. Yeah. 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 We'll, if we'll you, talk a little more. If that works out, fine. But we should make sure that they've had some sort of a background check yeah. for sure. And ideally, some sort of CPR. I think the background check is ironically more important because I think we probably have a lot of people at time meeting day who are certified in CPR. Um, anyway, okay. Anything else for town meeting? I don't have any other ideas unless somebody has a particular request. In the past, we also had the, the town committees that have booths in the back to kind of showcase what they've done over the year, you know, throughout the year to sort of see if anybody wants to Step up and, yeah, have a so that's something and we would set it up the night before. Do we have access to the gym the night before? Typically we do. Um, we'll have to follow that. up with David about making sure that they're still okay with that. But David's indication to me was that there, we would run this like a normal town meeting that there wasn't, weren't any special conditions or, or modifiers. We still should confirm that we have the gym scheduled the night before because yep. scheduling gets complicated. Um, and it was just be explicitly clear that we need it before the night before. Um, do you typically get tables from the school or do, do committees bring their tables? Do you know, Kyle? There, I think there's only about four tables that aren't the big lunch tables like, yeah. like this now. I would come and we would load up a truck from here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We should ask if we can use their tables. They have like four to six in that closet that aren't the fold up tables. Okay. The other thing we could do is an hour before town meeting, we'd have the pie social so people could come and socialize, get coffee and eat. Um, and we would also have Roland and Gary Clark play music. Um, and we would put, and I was, I'd always get flowers and sort of dot them around just for a little color and beautification. If we can get volunteers to do all of those things, I'm all for it. Uh, well, I was a board member at the time, so I, that's when I was volunteering to do it. I remember if you're feeling inclined to be that person. But it really make, it really matters. People love it. I mean, my whole thing was to make it more inclusive, make it more friendly, make it more inviting. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Anything else for town meeting that we're missing? 
Rosemary, do you have everything you need for town meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I suggest uh, swapping nine and ten? I mean, uh, ten and eleven on the agenda, since the conservation commission is here, and they probably don't need to sure. sit through a discussion about economic development. Yep, that's how you. You don't think they love what we talk well, about? Well, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that they might want to go home at some point in time and not listen to that. But no, if they there. want to, they can, it's right? Directly <laughs> it's directly related. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, are so we... I think we should, we'll keep it as is then, if you guys are feeling like, is there a dependency between one and the other? Should we have one over the other? Let's keep it as is then. Okay. Uh, economic development. Let's do it. All right, so I gave a brief written write-up on um, kind of how things have gone so far with making contact for holding a uh, economic development roundtable in Johnson. Uh, and it's it's been a very positive reception from everybody okay. that I've spoken to. Who have um, you spoken with? I spoke with the, let's see, LEDC, uh, the Planning Commission, the Mobile County Planning Commission, Agency of Commerce and Community Development is likely to send several people from different departments. Um, Vermont Council on Rural Development uh, is planning on attending. Uh, Peter Welch's office is going to send somebody to attend. I heard back from the League of Cities and Towns. They're interested. Still waiting to hear from Rural Development. Uh, and I'm also going to make contact with a couple developers, White and Burke, uh, and, and some others. Cool. That's awesome. That's um, really good. Pat Ripley is interested in working with me on the agenda, and I'd like to take him up on that. With this many people, we really need to focus the uh, conversation around a few topics. We were planning very, very roughly, thinking about three main topics having a discussion area around uh, the Jewett property, uh, attracting entrepreneurs, and uh, then more, a little bit more broad um, housing and, and uh, business development. If we're going to invite um, Senator Welch's office, you know, I, I think that Senator Bernie probably has more ability to influence uh, earmarks or legislation or funding opportunities at this point. So I think we should reach out to Senator Sanders' office, too, if you haven't already. I've sent a, an email. I don't have a great contact at Senator uh, Sanders' office. Um, you know, they're usually very responsive to any of those kinds of... I, I think we will hear from them. I just don't have... We yeah. should reach like, out to the president at NBU and perhaps they have a contact for us too. Yeah, they should, so they should at least know that we're, have, we're talking about having this conversation. Right. Yeah. You reach out to a lot more people. This is who you've heard back from. This is, is yeah, most of the people that I've heard back from. Okay, because I would think you'd want to, you'd reach out to Congressman Down. Yeah. Congresswoman Down. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll be happy to get them. And I know a few of the people that I have had some contact with want to see an agenda or something they want a little bit more detail about when is it going to be and what what are the topics it's going to be that, that's our plan um so my um i'm i want you know i was suggesting we have this discussion i want to have this discussion i want to be really careful that it ends up it does not end up being not our agenda so like having do it property totally cool entrepreneurs I really love that idea a lot, but it has to come back to Johnson. Like it can't be a, what impacts everybody else outside of Johnson. Uh, and the same with housing and business development. When we put those two things together, 
in a single agenda item, I hear somebody has an agenda that is not Johnson agenda. Uh, Cause I would not have those two as a single agenda item. I've had them as very different agenda items as it pertains to Johnson. So I think while I'm very much supportive of Pat helping put the agenda get together, we need to make sure that it's about like what we in Johnson can and want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I totally get what you're saying, but some of those issues by their very nature are bigger. I are going to be more regional in nature. I get it. So I, I just throw that out. I, I get what you're saying. And I agree with what you're saying, but I think we need to realize that we have a bigger those, audience. Yeah, some of those are not Johnson specific. Sure. Um, by nature. Sure. But if we spend all of our important attention span on housing and business development oh, and it is talking yeah. about the, the Northeast, right. like, okay, well, doesn't do it much good. Yeah. Why are we facilitating this conversation? Yeah. I, I agree. I'd, I'd like an update on. Um, Fiber optic in the world too. We've been around for years. That doesn't necessarily have to be part of that. We're not going to get no the doors in this town without. Is that your brain? Yes. <laughs> Did you get the phone's right from your daddy? Thanks. <laughs> but fiber is a good point. I mean, just general infrastructure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No entrepreneur is moving to Johnson without some fiber. Agreed. So maybe we want to invite Val or or yeah. yes. Okay. Um, are there? How about topics for the agenda? Is there anything you'd like to add or change from what we're? I want to know what is intended by housing and business development specifically. Like, what's the intent behind that as a single agenda item? My intent on that one is pretty loose at this point, other than I know it's a problem. I don't, I, I have a meeting scheduled with Pat where we're going to hash this out in more detail on Friday, but lack of housing and lack of business development that's how that i your point? see it locally is that you know mark you know we we're just hearing about people having trouble finding housing in johnson um i think the business development is pretty well related to the idea about attracting entrepreneurs but it's a little bit more broad about like you know for our existing businesses who might be interested in expanding yeah, you know, what can we do to help support them? But it's who are they? Like, do they exist? I don't know that they exist right now. Um, you know, but maybe we can. Would they would they be able to expand if we offered them something? And, and I don't know what that is. Um, Sorry, I'm putting my work hat on for a second, but I feel like we need to do opportunity mapping. Like we actually need to do a session where we talk about this idea expands out from what we know it today. You know, it changes our focus from a narrow focus about what housing means to a broader focus about the things that are associated with housing. Um, and maybe we're solving two problems at the same time kind of thinking um, by putting out like, what are all of the things out there? What are the opportunities around these things and how do they connect or how could they connect? Um, I'm worried if we just talk about putting an agenda together without thinking about it more broadly and more, I hate using the term open-mindedly because I don't mean it by we're being closed-minded, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I just don't want to limit thought, I guess. And I want to keep ideas simple and not complicated and have 
actionable things that we can come out of this discussion with. And if we're too narrow and we're too complicated, we're not gonna be able to have simple, actionable, open-minded things to come out of this meeting with. Um, anyway. I'm not saying these are the wrong agenda items either. I just want to make sure that when we start talking about what they mean, that it's not too forced. Okay. Kind of like actionable. Yeah, actionable is important. We should probably have some um, uh, ground rules, is the right word, but like expectations of what it is we want to bring into this conversation and what do we want to take away from the conversation yeah. as part of what the agenda is. Yeah, one of those ground rules essentially is, I think that this would be a planning session that is being sponsored by the select board um, and that these people are invited to offer thoughts and ideas and, you know, yeah. Agreed. But I think that's probably important at the outset. To state that. Set that yeah. Expectation. Set that understanding. Yep. I mean, I'm I'd love to hear what other communities are doing with their ARPA money to not necessarily part of this, but I expect we have a focus on that expectively. I think we need to this, yeah. Next I, year. It's gotta be well, spent, this right? upcoming year, yeah. Um Sorry, I lost my thought. ARPA money, where I started. Oh, uh, I think we need to decide before we go into conversations like this, how risk averse we really are. Because, because if we're willing to take risk at some level, and I do mean with ARPA funds, I don't mean with our operating budget, by the way, but if we're willing to take some risks, with big risk can come big return. It can also come with losses. And I think we need to decide how risk averse we are as a board or aren't. And maybe we aren't, maybe we are. I think it varies depending on each person we talk to, but we should probably get on the same page around that a little bit before going into this too. Maybe that should be the next board. It'll look different. In this the next board, yeah, that's a good point. As right after time meeting day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion on economic development? Uh, the last thing I've got from conversations uh, sounds like the last week of April is out for enough mm -hmm. people that it we probably want to avoid that like second or third week looks okay. like the most likely. Second or third week of April? Yes. Those are, I don't know who all these people are, but that's the third week is probably because it's school vacation for many people, but I think the second week might be too. I get two weeks off in April now? No, it's one week, but it varies depending on the district you live in. Is it the public meeting or is it the... Yeah, it would be a uh -huh. public meeting. We don't know. We're talking about the agenda and a little bit of the format, so I don't know how much. It'll be a public meeting. I don't know how much public participation though, there will be. Mm -hmm. Did you say the first or the second week or the second and third? Second and the third are looking the most likely right now. 10th and the 17th. I think that week of the 17th is a uh, school week for some communities. Um, probably the 10th is a good week choice one, um, just for what it's worth. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments from anybody about economic development? Can we keep Perfect. that on the agenda for I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. discussion? The working on it. Mark had asked, is there a preference for evenings or daytime? Is there some select board members aren't retired? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some have children. Or, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to be able to make I'm it. I'm happy with them evening meeting, Evan. Yeah. You could do it whenever you want. I can't make a daytime in the middle of the week where. If we're making an evening meeting, it might be worth it for us to serve dinner. Uh, ah, yes. Make pizza. <laughs> Um, like, I don't like that idea. You need to be on time. So <laughs> it depends on who's going to show up, I think. Um, because I would imagine that a lot of these people are would expect a daytime discussion. I would prefer if we're going to do daytime that we do late afternoon as opposed to, I would prefer either late afternoon or early evening or so. Yeah. Mornings, definitely not. I would guess that most of the people that are being invited are pretty used to the idea of the evening meetings. Yeah. Okay. Not not sure about that. But. I suspect they are, but I also think it might affect our attendance. Yeah, that's what I worry about. Uh, but I don't think it would be unusual for them. So if we have, if we make it attractive, I think they'll they'll come. Okay, cool. Uh, let's keep. I like that idea of keeping this on the agenda. We'll do it. Good. So hopefully, I'll. Uh, you had talked a little bit about wanting to do some things before we have an agenda. Are you okay with flushing out a draft agenda a little bit that I'll bring to the next meeting? That's fine. Okay. And then, if we want to refine it from here, we we can. Yeah. But I'll bring something that you can at least. And feel free to invite Pat to our next meeting too. I will. I think it would really be useful to just be that in advance of the meeting. Yeah. If we can. Yeah. As oh, yeah. if you're meeting tomorrow about the agenda, like uh, send it right after you meet. Friday. Okay, whatever. Send it right after you meet. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Um conservation project review. All right. Conservation Commission had uh had asked about having being more hands-on and providing an environmental and conservation perspective on projects uh, that the town was considering. And the select board's response was, was a request for more details about what that kind of role would look like. And the Conservation Commission has put some work into how they envision that role. Uh, cool. So I'd like to turn it over to, to Lois or, or Sue or whoever wants to. Well, then, did, did you just give the uh, handout that Sue sent to you for the board? I didn't see it in the panel. Why well, sent it to everybody? It, oh, she sent it to everybody, okay. and it came out after I had already made the packet, so we, I couldn't oh. include it. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess I'll just uh, quickly make the connection that I said earlier that Tom Sullivan was direct, maybe not directly related, but uh, any project that the select board has been doing is sort of in the, the conservation commission would like. So a little bit of heads up opportunity for us to review for, for our concerns and then we can feedback uh, from the commission's perspective to help you make your decisions. So that's sort of the, the gist of it. Can, can, can you give me a little further? Guidance on what you mean by any project? Uh, sure. Well, I mean, on town property. So that's where our jurisdictions, what jurisdiction we have, cover it. Uh, but now, town property. So, would, um, would the example that we talked about earlier about rail trail and Related proposals, developments, would that be the kind of thing that? Yeah. 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 I'm supportive of that idea. I think they should be more an integral part of our planning. Like the comment, the form that um, we've come up with is a way for us. To learn about projects as they get started, so that we can uh, meet with the groups and work with them and uh, try to help them 
know, we, we carry the environmental message in everything that we do. And if we hear about it too late, we may have missed something. So this is a pretty just straightforward form that, that we've come up with. And, and we would ask that if somebody comes in to talk about a project to Brian, that he share this with folks and then ask that it be returned to the Conservation Commission. And then we would then follow up with that person or, or group um, to see if so, somebody we can help. And then if you had any questions or concerns, you'd bring it to the group. And if you weren't, you know, if there whatever issue, it would basically be an escalation point to the select board at that point. I was just thinking about the pragmatic, um, like I'm all for this too, by the way, uh, just generally speaking, I'm just thinking about like logistics and the pragmatic approach to making sure we get this form filled out because I can very much see you know, people just doing things and not thinking about it, which I think has been the case all along, which is why we have this form. Um, I recognize the irony in what I'm saying. Um, but anyway, it just got me thinking like pragmatically many projects that occur related to land use um, have grants associated with them. So maybe it's a matter of making sure this form goes to the committee or whoever whoever is asking about doing something um, and they're requesting support from the board that this is our response. Like, make sure you get this to the conservation before it comes to the board. And also, um, you know, we'll address it from the board's standpoint. But if this was an immediate response to that, that might be a good way to ensure that the form gets distributed. But that's not the only place. Maybe that goes somewhat to my earlier question about what defines a project. Yeah, I think I heard what Noel said was um, if it's on town land. Yeah. That's very broad. Sure. Well, I think I think where it could get really broad is if it gets apply to grants that the town might be a sub a sub grantee or a primary you know like right uh so with the barrows house you know the, the tetra grant that the town is the primary um grant or for and the and tetras are the sub grantee would that well that's not that town. They, kind of, they said on like, town land yeah, that and that's the point I'm trying to make. It's not so, spot. If it's limited to like, land, then it... you know, we replaced uh, the playground at Old Mill Park. I would, I would be fine with running it by, but that was kind of somewhat time sensitive to order the material. I mean, do you want to be involved in fences around cemeteries? There's a lot of heated conversation on those ones. That is town land. That is a project. Right, but um, I guess so who would fill out as a practical matter? Who'd fill out the form? Somebody from the group that's working on a project, and they would tell us what it was, where it was, a little map. So you want we could get a handle of something we can have putting a property at work, going kind of forward. Are you only worried about the forest, or are you worried about all town land? Because the skate park could be filling those out every other week. Well, skate park is partially in Wood Lane, and there's some mowing going on there that we might have a comment on, and there's trees on the property as well that could use some management or maybe even more planting. So I think we would want to be involved in some of those. I think the truth is that a lot of those little ones like you're talking about, they're going to be real quick to use. You know, like we're going to move a ramp, or we're changing a ramp over here. It's a tiny footprint. It would take almost no time, I think, for us to just take a look at that and have some quick comments or write off really quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, the purpose, the purpose of conservation is conservation. And if we're talking about anything yes. that is you have town land, like, I don't see why we wouldn't, like. Uh, I'm supportive of it. Uh, I don't, in the scenario that it holds something up, I don't want to be tied to it. 
but I really think that communication between committees is important and getting feedback on the project is important. We've already done them this year, that's my point, and nobody that's sitting on the board, including myself, thought to talk to you about it. So if we missed this, then we could have whole meetings about how the board's not following its own procedures. I guess we already Well, we aren't. have them anyway. Yeah, we already <laughs> aren't. <laughs> but we have them anyway, but that's why I was trying to tie it back to like pragmatically what is going to cue us up to make sure that we get this form out. And I think that, like I said, oftentimes that land use comes with money and money comes with grants. That would be anything not related to highway. Yeah. Would be queued up. <laughs> this building, highway. So what we want is you know, this is sort of me just uh, speculating is that the idea being that when you all get a project in front of you, you would say that the conservation commission is on it. That's the checklist item. Yeah. 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 Right. They wrote up right here. And then if we talked down, about, you make the decision. If we talked about a year ago. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> I, think, I think though that it's a good idea. You know, I mean, here we're talking about Scrivener Bridge. Have you guys looked over that one? We just made a motion earlier. Well, that one's at the design yeah. phase. So. Yeah, it's yeah. really just. That'd be nice right. to have the input in the, in the design. So in reality, there's a whole bunch of things we could do to be much more disciplined on all we do around projects, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't see the harm in having a checklist of items and being held accountable for making sure this form gets filled out. Just we my two cents. Having, yeah, excuse me. We are talking about a four-day term of nine months. So we'd be holding the things up. Yeah. So there's a problem. There will be. In some ways, I hate to even raise the question, but no, I understand I understand what the Conservation Commission's interest is, but the planning commission could have an interest. Um mm -hmm. Historical the tree board could have an interest. The historical society could have an interest. Should should this be a beautification? Beautification committee could have an interest. Should we ex should we expand this concept to just? Am I wrong in thinking that uh, conservation is a at a certain point we can't a statute the like there's statutory elements to conservation? Yes. They, 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 yeah, there is a statute that specifically discusses. There's nothing in the statute that requires the select board to notify. Um, the concept. I, I'm not saying that we should, you know, but it's not a statutory requirement. I just asked that because, um, you mean it's a statutory requirement to have conservation commission? Is that the question? No, that's not. I was gonna say, I was gonna say that. What would be a new one? Anyway? They did, and that's. I was just asking. Right. So what are we gonna? I mean, okay, there is statute around the powers and duties of conservation committees, and it talks about all that you would think it would talk about. Frankly, um, my point in bringing it up is that. I think that conservation is a little bit different and planning commission actually falls in the same category probably, but I think they're a little bit different than when we talk about all the other committees that want to be involved in something. I don't think it's quite the same thing. You're probably right. My, my point is though that where, where, do you, where do you draw that line um, between inclusivity and in inviting additional comments. At, at some point, I think the select board just needs to make decisions on things. Um, I, I'm, I am not opposed to the idea of providing information about things like this to the Conservation Commission. Uh, okay. Not, but so you're saying we don't fill out the form or we do? What's that? Are you opposed to filling this form out? No, I'm not. Okay. I don't think I'm, I'm trying to figure out who would actually fill it out. As, I got you. As a practical matter, I think it's the guy sitting over there. It's probably Brian if it's town things. Yes. Yeah. 
or it's not town it's committee who is requesting something yeah i think so too that i, I think too that we could um, promote that in the body we're available if people are starting to plan for them to come and see us for yeah because we can help yeah that sounds great do you need help with that promotion or is that something that you could take like do you have the contacts you need? Oh, I think so. Yeah. But we have to back down the public plan actually. Right, right, right. Okay. I gotcha. Any concerns with approving? Uh, are we just approving the form? Yeah, I think so. Yep. I guess I would like to see a little bit more about what projects need the form and what what don't. I mean, if we're, if we're really going with every project, uh, totally. uh, the, the real replacement at the historic society would qualify. Yes, mural hanging yes. on the building yep. would be part of it. The project. Okay. So our intention is every project. That's the request. Is it not? Yeah. If it involves town, right? Town property. property. Yep. I think it's a fair request. So oh um, the, the Conservation Commission is a town body. The village is part of the town. Hmm. We're yeah. not responsible for projects that the village might That's true. propose. Are the village, is the village, are the village trustees going to be asked to fill out a similar form if it's, if it's a village project or a village-owned piece of property? Because we don't have jurisdiction over the, over the village or village owned property. I guess the property that we've been working with, the town owned property that's in the village, are things like Beer Recreation Park, town owned property, those kinds of properties. But like the village green is not a town property, it's a village property. Right. right. And out back here is the fire department. Uh, you know, the village does the entryway to the parking lot. Property, right? The town How doesn't do you own that. that. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's a question for the conservation. Yeah. I mean, we can mm -hmm. we can approve this more and, and deal with. I guess my point is, we can only deal with property that is town owned. That's good and there's property that are town and village owned combined. So what do we do with all those? Like the the Talcum property, that's that's town and village owned. We, I mean, we can fill out this form and sheet, but if you're going to provide feedback on a project that is on property that's owned by the town and village, the trustees should probably also get the feedback as well, shouldn't they? Mm -hmm. So that raises well, a good question. Them. Another example. Who uh, out the form? Well, <laughs> not just that, but the I don't mean to harp so much on, on which projects qualify, but the repairs we're doing on the lower storage building right now. Uh I just sent you an email today about there being water damage in the lower storage building that we're so you have to tell us why, because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, raccoons had gotten into the building and damaged insulation it's funny. Uh, <laughs> around the building and a water the water lines right. broke near the um, near the meter horn so that was taken care of but the problem that we they kind of elevated this today was that all the spots inside the building where the raccoons have damaged the insulation are causing condensation from all the water that okay. from the leak on Friday or not on Friday on Saturday. So now we're have, going to have to mitigate for mold. So I would say if you're not changing the footprint of the building, then it's not of particular interest to the conservation commission. It will include work on the outside to better to kind of fix the building envelope and try and prevent the ways that the raccoons are getting into the building. Is that changing the footprint of the building? No, it's just no, changing the structure. No, 
But we said a mural did count, and a mural isn't changing the footprint of the building either. I don't think we need to do mural either. Okay. So it's not any project. Well, it's any town property. That's what we stated, and then the discussion kind of like traveled. I heard any project on town land. Okay, so you don't care about buildings. You, you don't care, care about, about interior repairs. I mean, I don't think we discussed that type of thing, but we're the natural resources. Yeah. That, yeah. Environment. Right. So it's really outside stuff. Outside things that would affect the environment in any way. Yes. So what about stuff like that the town crew does? No way. Day to day, digging, <laughs> cutting trees down. Well, that's highway, which have been exempted, I believe, or are right. So <laughs> highway, I guess like, I assumed that it would be exempt. There was never a specific request. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of basic maintenance of road and enjoy the ditches and the runoff and the tree borders. Then right, they're not making them like. Here's the thing. Why the thing is. How about we just all like agree that we will do what we think is appropriate. And when it's not appropriate or somebody misses something, we just talk about it. I like that. And make yeah. a tweak instead of talking about what we can't do. Talk about what we can do. Do you guys keep up with the minutes at all or watch the videos? No, what's this? Dude? All of our every meeting. <laughs> yeah. All of our yeah, all of our emails are on the town website. And I would highly recommend reaching out to the but I think to the point, like we understand what the intent of the conservation committee is, and we should push the form when it suits their purpose. We should, and we should fill it out when it suits their purpose. I don't think emotions needed to. I agree. Do better. So you, we're just consenting that we agree to this, yeah. Right. But I do have a serious question. What? Historic society has pies. Are you guys going to start doing cookies at Tuesday Night Live? I love cookies. I'm when and where? <laughs> They're, during the day. <laughs> They're during the day, of course. <laughs> I can join the lesson. I can bake really good. Yeah, bake. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you all. We'll do our best and give us feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay, oh. update on assessor. What? No, never mind. Keep going. Keep going. All right, update on assessor. Uh, I guess that's it. Um, the simple, the simple answer is it's a mess. Uh, we. We, we we put out an ad, LCPC put out an ad for a shared assessor. We got one response. Um, that person is very interested in um, a part-time position, but that person is not, quote, qualified. Um, so Wolcott has basically said, we don't want to pay for training an unqualified person. So they're backing out of the services agreement, which drops the total number of hours down to 16. Um, I've been back and forth with Ron Rajinsky from Hyde Park. Um, Terry Sabin was currently doing our, our work. Um, I think I forwarded an email in which Terry's response was, she thinks that it is appropriate to continue or renegotiate with LCPC for services agreement because she thinks there's the potential at some point in time to turn that position into more of a full-time position, which is something she very much would like to see happen. I think in my discussions with Ron, we have a much more immediate um, concern and that's getting a grand list launch this year. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, my personal opinion is that it m probably makes more sense for us to try and work with Hyde Park to develop a shared assessor position in an interlocal contract between the two towns and leave LCPC out of it. Um, but I think what I'd like to ask the board tonight is A, 
do you want me to continue trying to work on this program and figure out a possible solution? With LCPC specifically? Well, I, ideally, I, I would, if, if the board is, if the board wants me to continue trying to figure out a solution, which I would then bring back to the board um, for review and approval, I'm, I'm happy to do that. But I, I'd let, if, if that's the, if that is acceptable, then my ask of you would be to look at the possibility of a two pronged approach. One would be the possibility of amending our agreement with LCPC and going through them. The other would be working with MFI part um, on a interlocal contract concept. And do both, you're saying, when you say two prong? I, I, I would bring back one proposal, yeah. but I'd like the uh, flexibility, I guess, to talk with LCPC and with Hypers and bring something back to you guys, which would either be an amended agreement with LCPC or LCPC or an analog, a draft and a local contract with Hypers. Rosemary, what are your thoughts on all this? We're gonna need something. Yeah. Yeah. Is Carrie working at all for Hyde Park? She isn't at this point in time. He has agreed conceptually to work with Hyde Park. Um, Hyde Park had a had a contract with Nemark, mm -hmm. um, which has expired. Um, and Terry has agreed to work in a uh, if if we were to hire an assessor right now, that person would not have any of the uh, level one through four um, uh, qualifications through part of evaluation review. It is not required. Um, getting that certification is voluntary. Um, it is not a requirement to hiring an assessor. The statute refers to if the town either eliminates the office of Lister or is unable to fill the office of Lister, then the select board must hire or appoint an assessor who shall be a qualified, uh, professionally qualified. There is no definition of what professionally qualified is, and there is no requirement that I've been able to find, nor has Ron, um, for professional qualifications in that certification. But our general thought process would be that it would make sense at least until the person that we hire can obtain a level one assessor certification through PBNR, that we would have a site contract with Terry for oversight in review of, of the Green Hills. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Ron thinks it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, you would probably yes. agree. Yes. Um, so that's the general concept that we're looking at. And that would be the case in either case, whether it's LCPC or um, uh, uh, an interlocal contract between High Park and, and Johnson. Candidly, one of the reasons I'm leaning towards um, an interlocal contract between Johnson and High Park is I think we could do that for less money than we could through LCPC. And I will tell you, I had a conversation with Tasha Wallace this afternoon in which she said, She's willing to talk to us about renegotiating it, but she thinks at 16 hours a week, it makes more sense for us not to go through LCPC. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, thoughts? A lot of description. Uh, you have flexibility as far as I'm concerned for whichever way is the best for the town. Should we post? For an RFP also as a three pong approach? That's a really good question. I'm glad you brought it up, Evan, because I, I went I went and looked at our that was a question that Ron also brought up. Um we did advertise through LCPC, LCPC, um, but that was for a shared position with LCPC being the employer. This is a different situation. Our Personnel policy specifically says if it is considered to be an emergency hire or emergency appointment, the select board 
can waive the requirement to post, uh, advertise, or hire within. Um, I don't think we've got anybody within. I mean, we could certainly ask uh, existing staff if they have any interest in becoming a, a hired or paid assessor. Um, but I think that I think that is a decision the board probably needs to make is whether or not you want to go out for an advertisement for a person as an assessor or a town shared assessor opposed to the proposal that we have with us to complete um, and or do it as an emergency hiring and waive the requirements for, for that. So it's a good good question. We already have a job description for this, right? Yeah, we posted an RFP when we got Terry. All right. Yeah. And yeah. there was another. There was another person who applied. Yeah. Maybe we should post. Why not? Mm -hmm. Let's. I. I. I guess my take on it all is if you're already having, you're already in deep on conversations, and I support you continuing those conversations, at a high level, and also. If you feel like there would be benefit to us posting, I would definitely be open to posting it again, posting that older position. Maybe it needs a tweak or two, but hopefully not. Um, and see what we get for feedback. I'm also curious, actually, if we posted in realtor land, if anyone in the realtor realm would be interesting as housing sales begin to slow you hold good question we did it was posted on the vermont association of listers and assessors and i think you know that was probably looked at by real estate people on a regionally regular basis i i think we have a real estate person in house by the way my my concern right now is I under normal circumstances, I would say no harm in, in throwing out another job posting or, or a, uh, an advertisement for position. My concern is that we have a young person who I think is otherwise pretty qualified, and I and Terry has has interviewed him. I've talked to him several times. I think this person could do the job and could do it well and could be up to speed pretty quickly. Okay. If we Close and it's three weeks out, and we lose this person. We could end up having nobody. Sure. Oh, so that's that's, and I don't, you know, I don't know. I, mean, I, I can see the value of posting, and I can also see the value of striking well the iron saw and grabbing bird and bush. Because spring will be here before we know it. I know. That's the other. That's the other problem. Is you know by April first, uh, you know, there's things that are going to happen. So, Mark, I say we go with the emergency hiring procedure and if we can, if we've got bird in the hand. Bird in the hand. So, I think we're supporting you moving forward and just looking for updates on you. Okay. But we trust your opinion. Well, I, I definitely will bring something back to you, May, maybe even as early as our next meeting, because okay. uh, we, we do have to get moving on. Now. I appreciate okay. I appreciate all what you've done. Our, yeah, me too. Uh, you've done a bunch of work, and our and your email updates are good. Thank you. Yes. Great. Okay, we have one last agenda item, and it is our next meeting date. So twenty first. This whole. No. Yes. I don't know. I have to open my calendar. What's wrong with the twentieth? It's President's Day, and it conflicts with the school yes. budget. Yeah. Meeting. If we move it, then I have to go to school meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of sending Susan. If we move it, uh, <laughs> well, don't so we don't have to move it. That's what I'm. Brian doesn't want to work that day. It's a holiday. Oh, I could work that day. Um, the big, you know, you have to be aware that it's it is a holiday. So, you know, Lydia processing invoice and, and things that's going to shut off and you know before the weekend instead of after the weekend um, i don't think it's going to have any real effect on us so i don't mind doing it but 
So um, the 20th would be fine for me. The 22nd would be fine for me, or which is Wednesday. Or the following Monday, the 27th would be fine too. All three of those dates work for me too. Uh, the 20th is. The 21st is, I would rather stay away from it if possible. I can't do the 21st. Wednesday is fine with me. Wednesday you'd prefer? Wednesday is 21st. Wednesday. Wednesday work for you? Because I think the first season they might have a meeting on the on that Monday. It's next week. We're going to first week in eight something. weeks where we don't get together. Yeah. Uh, Mark, yeah. is the 22nd okay for you? We should have a meeting next week. Yeah. Stop let's, it. Let's meet next. I mean, let's get together and meet next week. We're going to meet next week. Sorry. <laughs> Did we just trade a holiday for a holiday? 22nd? Yes. Is that what you're okay, saying, Duncan? It is. <laughs> Which, do we want Did we to just trade Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday? President's Wednesday. Day for Ash Wednesday? Do you like it? 6.30? Yes, 6.30. 6.30. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 6.30 on the February 7th? Yep. Yeah. Officially in my calendar. I actually have not. It's the other one. That's email, everybody. Want me to send you all an invite? Sure. Anything else? Nope. Meeting adjourned. Adios, everyone. 902. Record time. Eric's not here. He was giving you a hard time. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs>